Now, one of the things that we wanted to uh, kind of in the theme of working with more plugins is as we kind of work with different elements, we said, okay, wouldn't it be cool if we could have different, a new suite of plugins, all right? So, you know, we invented the whole VST plugin phenomena. You know, it was Steinberg that said, hey, you know, instead of buying like really expensive proprietary keyboards that are in fact dumb computers, why don't we use the computer to do all the number crunching and generate sounds? We kind of take that for granted now, you know, but we did it in like 1998. And it's obviously, I think it's going to stick for a while. Uh, you know, and obviously we're a part of Yamaha and Yamaha sells, you know, lots of instruments and, you know, they, they you know, they understand that, you know, some people want to use instruments for live use, but in a studio environment where you have total recall, you know, the VST plugins are just phenomenal. Now, one of the plugin types that takes a tremendous amount of actual processing power and a tremendous amount of latency can be dealing with different plugins like for multiband. So, you know, those are, you know, that kind of watch plugin latency rise that multiband compressors have some of the highest latency of any plugins because in essence, it's almost like four different plugins compounded. So we said, okay, wouldn't it be cool if we could say, okay, I wanted to add a track and we wanted to add some new plugins and some enhancements. Now we brought back some classic plugins as well. So um, under dynamics, we could actually just look at, we'll come right over here and say, okay, we have a multiband compressor. And you know, we've been doing multiband compressors since around 96, 97. Uh, so we've been doing it for a long time. So you have a four band multiband compressor, but we thought, hmm, wouldn't it be cool if you could have each band have independent side chain abilities? So if I wanted to side chain the bass frequencies different than our kick or different than our snare or different than our high end. But we see this little button here. It's very diminutive. It says live mode. So we thought it'd be cool if we actually just, once you turn that on, that the plugin has zero latency. So you could actually record through a multiband compressor without it sounding like a badly dubbed Chinese Kung Fu movie, latency wise. So huge thing. So again, a full multiband compressor. And we said, okay, let's, if we're gonna compress it. Let's kind of do the same concept as an expander. So you have a multiband expander again with side chain and live mode. In this theme also, one of our most popular plugins is an envelope shaper, which is like a transient designer. It's kind of like the instant anti-suck drum plugin, if you will. You know, when people are like, hey, I want my drums to sound like John Bonham. It's like, yeah, why don't you play like him? That would help, <laughs> you know? But everyone thinks it's like a compressor, and it's like, no, it's, it's kind of him a lot. So, but an envelope shaper can give you that type of, you know, where you can have more tack on the drums and have them kind of last longer without it being compressed, but it's a multi-band envelope shaper. So I could have, like, let's say you have a drum loop and it's like, okay, the kick is too floppy and the snare is too tight. You could actually just go to the snare frequencies and, and have those longer and tighten up the kicks and add more attack or less attack on the cymbals. So a killer plug-in for that. So, I mean, it's like by far like, you know, such a great plug-in for drums and now to have the multi-band version. One of the plugins that we brought back, it was kind of interesting while I was in town last month, uh, I had lunch with my friend Paul Hasslinger, great composer, member Tangerine Dream, uh, super smart guy. And he's just like, and he was visiting our office in Hamburg and he was just like, and they looked at all the boxes of old products, like discontinued stuff, like from the 80s and 90s. And he's like, bring that one back. And he pointed to Quadrafuzz. And Quadrafuzz was actually, interestingly enough, it was, I believe it originated as a Craig Anderton do-it-yourself electronics project. They did, I think it might have been an electronic musician magazine or something like that. Uh, and it was basically a multi-band fuzz. And we said, okay, and we, we actually did it in a software version because we thought it was such a cool thing and, and we and we got Craig's blessing with it and everything which was great. Um, so we actually kind of brought it back but we said okay let's do something interesting. Let's make it five different types of distortion. So if I want to have multi-band tape distortion or let's say I want tape distortion on my low end for the kick and bass but I want it to have uh, tube saturation in the mid-range 
or decimator, you know, for my snares to really make them cut through the mix, or I just wanted distortion on my real highs. But also, each band could also have its own delay if you wanted to. So instead of like having different filter plugins that you had to buy, spend extra money on, worry about them being updated when operating systems get updated, you could just simply use this. Also included, you know, a, kind of an oldie but a goodie, something that can make or break projects, or especially the most important aspect of your project, a de -esser. So you can have it, you know, set for male and female voices. You could change the frequencies, how, you know, how much of the frequency range it's de -essing. Some other plugins have been updated. So if I wanted to come here, we could say, um, you know, something that's useful a lot, you know, we updated the tuner, you know, it was before it was like a little too sensitive and kind of small, but now you could actually just kind of come directly here and have kind of, you know, now it's a rack mount tuner in VST form, you know, and it's always like something like, you know, I've been to so many sessions where the guitar player forgot their tuner and it's just like, oh, such a pain, you know, and it's, it's always great recording a whole guitar track that's slightly out of tune. So all those plugins free. So question? Yeah, Magneto is brought back, and this is again in our classic plugin. Uh, so yeah, you did see Magneto. So Magneto is actually the first tape saturation that we did in around 97, 98. Um, and another one brought back by popular demand. So, and what's kind of cool about this is uh, with 7.5, you have the Magneto back. So you could have tape saturation. Uh, and this actually shows up in a channel strip, which we'll look at in uh, just a couple minutes as well. So, you know, we, you know, people would always like call us up and be like, just bring back this plugin. You know, I just love Magneto. It just made the biggest difference in all my mixes, you know. So, uh, you know, sometimes when our developers, if they get a little bit ahead, you know, they'll go, okay, yeah, we'll take a look at that algorithm. And, you know, sometimes it's stuff that was done for, you know, Windows 95 and they'll kind of, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, we can, you know, we have some time to update it and they will and kind of bring it back. But, you know, and one of the beautiful things at Cubase, as you can see, it, you know, it has so much. You don't have to sit there and, you know, there's nothing worse than buying a program to do recording and then realize that you need to go out and buy a tuner, you need to get a tape saturation plug-in, you need a guitar amp plug-in. And, you know, by the time you're like, cool, I got my DAW, now I only need $2,000 of third-party tools to get it functional. You know, everything that you see here is included with Cubase. And that's the beauty of it. And again... It's, you know, not having to worry about updates, not having to worry about, you know, integration, all that stuff. It's just all works as you want, as you expect. Mm -hmm.